Hey survivors, welcome to vlog 10. It's been a while since the last vlog, and we've got a giant list of changes to go over, as well as some multiplayer gameplay at the tail end of the vlog. Stick around, because we've got a lot to run through. We apologize for the wait, but we assure you that it's been well worth it. Dead Man's Flats has received a polish pass and is now ready for an optimization pass. It's a town that's received a lot of love in the past and is essentially the first proper town to have been added to our world that meets our expectations of quality and scale. Dead Man's Flats contains quite a few unique locations in the town, including an apartment complex and a few motels for all of the would-be tourists that were once pouring in from Highway 1. We've been transitioning to a new level lead for getting work done on our world, and Cat has been doing a great job at fleshing out the world as well as getting a large amount of the groundwork laid down for Canmore. Canmore is the single largest town in Dead Matter and we cannot wait to see it get completed. We've brought on a new artist, who goes by the name Nahito, and he's done some amazing work on some of the art assets that really bring Canmore to life. He's also done some work on adding some burned out vehicle variations, as well as light bars that will be usable on the police car when driving it around. Nahito has also created a gorgeous sign that'll be placed next to Highway 1, the main travel corridor of our world. You know that you'll be approaching Canmore when you see this sign in the distance. Canmore is extremely large, and the outer limits of the town contain plenty of interesting locations, including the police station and some commercial buildings as seen in previous vlogs. There are also plenty of houses scattered around the area that you'll be able to shack up in. While the main stretch of Canmore is still under construction, with many new buildings to match the aesthetic of the location, a lot of the buildings on the outskirts of the town are close to being ready for an optimization pass. An optimization pass is generally the last pass that a location sees when it is being constructed for our world. We've got some industrial buildings on the outskirts of Canmore, such as the concrete plant as well as a large recycling facility. Both of these locations would make an excellent establishment for a hardy group of survivors. Nomad has been working on a gigantic underground mining complex, complete with puzzles and potential hazards that need to be cleared. The aesthetic of the mine so far has been gorgeous, and we look forward to seeing it fully completed, which should be around the time that Vlog 11 rolls around. Nomad has been going the extra mile in making sure that the mines meet our standard for world interaction with a handful of scripted actors that he's prepared for the mine. Nomad goes through the mine and gives some of the developers of the game a tour in the gameplay segment of the video. Stick around if you're interested in seeing more of it. On top of the abandoned mining complex, Nomad has been taking some time to add a crashed commercial airliner to the map. This location is still a work in progress, but we plan on fleshing it out by allowing players to retrieve the black box which will be detailing the fate of the people trapped on the plane as it came crashing down. I've implemented the first pass of the tool belt item system. These items are items that persist upon death. Currently there's the key ring, which allows you to store multiple keys to different doors, including the trunks of some vehicles. The wallet, allowing you to store currency, as well as rare key cards that have access to high tier loot locations, such as the armory and the police station. The inventory has seen a massive facelift internally. Due to the facelift that I've given it, I've had to implement every single item back into the game, and that task as of now has been mostly complete. Network traffic for replicating an item has been minimized as the item data is now completely flexible and capable of storing any data type that we feed into it. While this has had the downside of having to re-implement every item, including all of the weapons, we feel that a game where half the time you spend is time spent interacting with items and gathering supplies, that the changes were well worth it. We've been able to rapidly integrate new features as the overall pipeline for creating items is cleaner than ever before. Our inventory currently features storing items within other items, a dynamic weapon pouch system that grants additional weapon slots depending on what you are wearing, being able to combine items as well as stack certain items that have a homogeneous item data. We've also got in-world containers and searching them is a requirement. When searching a container, you will end up making some sound that anyone can hear. Keep that in mind and plan accordingly. We've got our character mesh in game now, and we've got some clothing to match. There's a plethora of content flooding in to make sure that you can have a stylish survivor while exploring post-apocalyptic Alberta. We've got a firefighter outfit, which is easily one of my favorite outfits to wear while playing other survival games. We've also got a brand spanking new fire axe to go with it. One of our strongest goals for the closed alpha is making sure that every occupation has a matching outfit. 
If you're extra lucky and you run into the military vest, which allows you to carry many small items, as well as a knife and a pistol. We've also implemented some secondary animations for the clothing. Backpacks will now jiggle around as you walk with them on your back. Gunslinger has been doing some work on the AI systems in the game, including changes to how zombies approach the player. Instead of walking straight towards you, they'll now attempt to surround and trap you. It won't be easy to get away from them, especially if your legs are injured. Zombie hordes will also now split in half and chase after multiple targets. Our zombies also now feature some voice recordings from some of the people in our partner program, including Dead Matter News' Avivik, who did an excellent job mimicking the infected. Big shout out to Dat Voice Guy, Hanatonius, Saint Beard, and ZMZ Reloaded for lending their talent to our game. You can find links to their channels in the description of this video. Gunschlinger has also been working hard on adding a new predatory animal to the world, the bear. He can stand on his own two feet, and you should probably back the hell away if you see him performing this action in the distance. Gunschlinger has also started implementing a hunting system that allows you to gut animals and harvest items from them such as their skin, bones, and even antlers. If the animal you've shot has a pair of antlers on their head, of course. I've done a large pass on our world interaction system, including a bit of work under the hood to maximize our networking performance. We've done a large pass on the curtains, which are a lot less ugly than they were before. They also use an efficient cloth rendering technique that Unreal Engine has made available to us. These curtains will block light, and they'll block player visibility, so long as you don't make the mistake of standing behind a curtain at night with the lights on. People will still be able to see you. In order to counteract this effect, you will be able to use newspaper, water, and glue to cover windows with newspaper, blocking visibility. This is essentially the tier 0 of barricading that we're offering, and there'll be plenty more to come in the near future. All building interactables such as flicking a light switch on or off, opening a cabinet door, opening or closing a curtain, are all treated as a single entity underneath the hood, sending the absolute minimum amount of data to update their corresponding states without having to change any of the pipeline used to actually create the interactables. Based on community feedback, we've ripped out our old claiming system, and we're going to be re-implementing it with support for claiming a majority of the buildings in the game. You'll also be able to disassemble, or in certain cases, reuse furniture that is present inside of the buildings. The current rule of thumb for the new system that we're currently planning out is that your claim is only as strong as your ability to protect it. Due to the changes in our inventory system previously mentioned and how intertwined our items and weapons are, we've decided to overhaul a bit of the first person animation rig to feel a lot more responsive while maintaining a realistic look. A lot of our new animation setup is completely procedural. Aiming down sights used to be animated, but now is fully procedural. This has a wide variety of benefits, such as being able to reload while aiming down sights, or checking your current magazine while aiming down sights. Literally any animation we want to play will work while aiming down sights and while your weapon is at the hip. We've also added the ability to switch between a scope and iron sights if the weapon supports it, such as the Lee Enfield or an AK type weapon with a PSO scope. Shiny has also been doing an awesome work with the weapons. All gunshot and weapon handling sounds are now properly attenuated in the world. Gunfire in the distance now feels right, and you'll be able to hear people's final stand from a distance while exploring the world. Our weapon system now properly supports different ammunition types being loaded into the magazine. This is best demonstrated when using a pump action shotgun, which can accept buckshot, shells, or even flare rounds. You will not be required to load one or the other, they are completely interchangeable. Spread has been completely removed from the game. We now fire weapons from an approximation of the barrel based on procedural animations that have been added to the game. We've implemented quite a few of the backer weapons into our game. The new weapons include the SVD Dragonov, which is one of the most powerful sniper rifles in the game at the moment. We've also implemented the 416, which comes in a variety of different flavors. We haven't implemented the magnifier just yet, but by the time closed alpha rolls around, you'll be able to use it to increase the flexibility of your weapon. The 22 rifle that was seen in the last development vlog, which includes a 110 round drum magazine that I've nicknamed the Beehive, has been implemented into the game. We've also got a new shotgun in town, as seen in the previous development vlog. This 12 gauge boomstick is perfect for defending yourself against the infected or other survivors, capable of firing bug shots, slugs, and even flare rounds which can be used to lure the infected away or towards a location. Shiny has also implemented the P90, a powerful bullpup SMG with a near bottomless clip, perfect for spraying down the infected or other survivors. 
Grenades have been changed to be a lot easier to control. You can now click and hold to release once you've lined up a toss. You can also click and hold with the right mouse button to perform an underhanded toss. You can also cancel a toss at any time before you throw by holstering the grenade back into your inventory. Shiny has been hard at work improving animations for weapons all across the board to make sure that they feel responsive. He's also implemented some new gloves and view model sleeves that will match whatever outfit that you are wearing. We strongly believe that responsive gunplay is very critical to creating an immersive experience and we want everything from driving a vehicle to using a rifle to feel as immersive as possible. We've also been working on adding more civilian oriented weapons to the game to make sure that people are commonly found with weapons that are more easily found in Canada. Stefan has also created a beautiful double barrel shotgun. The over and under shotgun was one of the first weapons that we originally implemented back in our Kickstarter days, and we're excited to see it make a comeback. Rizzler and Stefan have also created an M14 for one of our boomstick tier backers. He's done an excellent job on the weapon and we're stoked to see it implemented in game. Thank you again to Markstrom for the support, we truly appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Vehicles have seen some additional work, we now have a functioning radio and a proper set of animations for driving in first person. The animations still have a little bit further to go, but we're quite satisfied with the result thus far. I've also done a pass on all of our static vehicles in the world. Vehicles can have their wheels and tires shot out, doors can be opened and closed, including the van. Random keys will also spawn in the world that will be tied to a vehicle trunk, potentially unlocking a source of tasty loot for you to enjoy. It's up to people to figure out which keys hold more values than others, and we're excited to see people experiment with them. All the static vehicles in our world will also feature a unique, randomly generated license plate or set of license plates if the driver originated from British Columbia before their demise in Alberta. Keep an eye out for easter eggs as we have vanity plate support on our license plate system. Disseminate has been doing a ton of work on the game's backend, as well as a few other features that have helped bring the world to life. He's written a UI manager that should help keep our user interface issues to a minimum. He's also rewritten the main menu and pretty much the entirety of our multiplayer backend. Backend. Disseminate has integrated a new weather system based on meteorology formulae. Everything is completely dynamic and there is no weather state. It is completely simulated and also takes the time of year into account. He's also done some work on integrating soundscapes that will be incorporating some sounds from our new sound engineer. If you've played The Long Dark then you will recognize some of Dave's work. On top of all of that, he's also implemented a brand new radial menu system for the game, rewritten the voice over IP system, and upgraded our version of Unreal Engine to UE4.24. I've also started some work on a basic admin system, which allows you to observe players, teleport to players, bring players to you, as well as send them back when you're done with them. Players will be able to type slash request with a message into the chat in order to have a direct line of communication with server staff that are currently online. Admins can also kick or ban players from the server. If you like what you've seen so far, please consider supporting us on Indiegogo or our own website. Links are in the description. We truly appreciate all of the support over the last couple of years and we are excited to play the game with our backers in the near future. We've now got some gameplay for you to enjoy for the rest of the video. Keep in mind we're still in a pre-alpha state and still have a few more months and bugs and features to go before you'll be able to hop in game. I personally promise that any issues that you may notice in this video will be cleaned up by the time you get your hands on it.
right there, bud. Hey. Thanks. Ah, there's one more. Where? In front of the stash. Stash. The front. Again, stash. There's two. There's two. Good job, buddy. Both. Good job. Oh God, he's stuck on the wall. All right, you come <laughs> down from there. Yeah, sure. Is there any like food or some shit left in here? I All haven't looted right. this yet. They chased me up the roof. I hadn't. I didn't have a chance. Oh shit. Uh, holy shit. There's stuff everywhere. Yeah, this place is packed, dude. I'm packed. <laughs> There's some radical Jakes here. I don't have the space for Double it, you take it. Them. Yeah, I have it. Dude, I already have it. Bandits over here. Painkillers. Oh. I got the key for the you car outside. Something? Yeah. Uh, hell yeah. Where are the painkillers? I took them. stuff in here. What? Oh, there's the key card. Do you mind if I grab the... Oh, shit. Grab or... Grab the radio? Yeah. In the beanie if you want it. I, I stick with my booty. Oh shit, I don't have a key ring. What? That's the get car inside, coming. get inside, get inside. Where the fuck did he go? Driving down the street. That's fucking weird. Fuck. 
That's weird. Yeah, fuck. Nothing. Let's keep going. I've got the key card for the police station. Yep. Oh my god. Small body bags. There's a key in here for the ambulance. Uh, you grab it. Okay. I grabbed the saline. I took the morphine. Ah, right before I got it. Um, which ambulance? Oh. There's just one. Okay. One on yeah, one. this one. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's sesame. I've got blood. Just a bunch of medical shit. I'm taking the O negative. There's a guy here. There's a guy. Hey. Hey. Whoa, hey. What's going on here? Oh, not much, not much. Came from down the road. I heard a bunch of shooting earlier. Oh yeah. So, uh, what items do you have on you? Oh, you know, just like some ammo, scrap to together for my. Uh, yeah, I think you should drop it. Oh, yeah, drop your shit, buddy. Oh. Drop it! Drop it! Oh. Come on! Come on! Drop your pants. Oh, come on. Drop your fucking pants. Drop your pants. fucking pants. Drop your pants. <laughs> where are the pants? Yeah, where are the pants? <laughs> I dropped them. Light them up, crowd. Where are the fucking pants? Yeah, that's coming. Yeah. Well, it's his fault. Pants shouldn't have fallen through the world. You got the ammo? <laughs> yeah, I got the ammo. Sweet. Oh shit, there's someone up there. Yeah. Go for the police station. Don't you think they already do that? Then? Uh, not where we're going. My friend knows the secret.
Hell yeah. My bad. I'm pretty sure they already know that we here, so... Just some ammo. I got another pistol if you want it. I'm good. P90 max, other max. I didn't get hit. Fire alarm. Oh my fucking god. Let, let's get out of here. Yeah, I closed all of the doors. Tell me a bit more about your mind. Like, what can you do in it? Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen this, so... So, right now we're heading to the bottom of this um, air shaft. To, well, when we step right out, there will be a small uh, concrete room. We'll be able to turn on some lights, illuminate the way, as we head further into... Oh, there's people in here. Hello. Hello? Yeah, I see them. So yeah, so here's um the first room we have. Um pretty fair bone. We turn on the light. Very nice. Much better. Now, we're gonna be heading down, uh... Down there, so we're gonna need, uh, some light. Always nice. Wow. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Right. You randos come along with us. Various shafts. Um, this is the placeholder model. If you have power, you should be able to open it. It's really cool.
Now if you progress further into the mines, uh, something that you're going to have to watch out for is of course uh, breathable air. So from time to time you will have to reactivate uh, such a giant uh, air fans uh, such as um, this one in front of us. Holy shit, that thing is weight, man. Really cool. 